Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sketch a rational function without the use of calculus. So all the information I'm going to use in this video will be limited to what you typically um, get from a pre-calculus class and algebra 2 class. So we will not be doing any differentiation. We will not be taking derivatives. That's what I mean. You will not be looking for maxima or minima, concavity. We won't do all that stuff. We'll just look at the information we have and say, I, I, I can sketch this. Okay, but before I get into the video, I want to thank all my current subscribers and all those who are going to subscribe after watching this video for getting me to 1,000 subscribers and above. This is the very first video I'm doing after reaching 1,000 subscribers. It's been a very busy period for me, but I'm back and more videos will be out. So um, thank you and thank you and thank you. God bless you. Now let's go into um, the math of this day. Just to make this very easy, I have written the things that you need to look out for every time you need to sketch a function without using calculus, okay? The most important things are for you to know what the vertical asymptotes are or is. It depends on how many you have. You want to know what the horizontal asymptote is. You want to also know whether it's possible that that function, because some weird functions, even though it's an asymptote, will still cross the asymptote just quickly and come back, okay? Um, you also want to know what the x-intercept is, which is universal for all graph sketching. You want to know where the graph crosses the y-axis, uh, the x-axis rather, and where it co crosses the y-axis. And that's all, okay? And you want to know the behavior of the graph based on the multiplicity of the x-intercepts. Now, let's go to this question. So, the good thing about rational functions is that you will expect all values of x on the graph to fit into the function, except when you look at the denominator, you don't want to have a zero. Okay, whatever values of x will give you a zero in this denominator will be the horizontal asymptote. That is, there must be the values of x you cannot have on your graph. Because x cannot be negative 1, that will make this zero, and that makes this function undefined. We don't want that. So, x cannot be negative 1, and x cannot be 3. So, I'm just going to write those two answers. So, x equals negative 1, and x equals 3. So, those are the two values of x you want to avoid completely. And they also constitute what you call your critical values, because you, you must avoid them. Okay, for now, let me recognize that x equals negative 1. Let's call this x equals negative 1. And x equals 3. 1, 2, 3. x equals 3 are vertical asymptotes, which means when we sketch our graph, we must avoid those lines by all means. Because the graph is not defined at those points. So the graph cannot go through those two lines. It's important you do that. Now let's go back to what we're doing here. Now what is the horizontal asymptote? You see how we have vertical lines? It's possible that... The graph can al will also be avoiding some lines that are running horizontally. Sometimes it's this, but how do you know which of the lines, if there exists one, that um, you will be avoiding? Well, in order to find your horizontal asymptote, you have to first look at what the rational function is. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the rule is just look at the leading coefficient for each term. Look at this. If you write this out, you're going to be getting something like 2x squared plus blah, 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 blah. Okay, or 2x squared minus blah, 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 blah. It's actually going to be a minus. But we don't need that. What we need is just the leading coefficient divided by what's going to be, if you distribute this, it's going to be x squared minus blah, blah, blah. Well, we don't need the rest. What you need will just be, because these two are quadratics, the degrees are the same, the ratio of the leading coefficients is what you call the horizontal asymptote because they're both of the same degree. If one degree is different from the other, there are other rules, but I don't want to focus on that right now. So at this point, the uh, horizontal asymptote is going to be 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. So you must avoid the line y equals 2. Or the graph will try to avoid the line y equals 2. I need to rewrite this. So it will be y equals 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. Okay, so that's the horizontal asymptote, which means if you go to this graph, Let's say this is y equals 1, this is y equals 2. This line, the graph, will also avoid that line. So the question is, even if you have a horizontal asymptote, is it possible that the curve, the graph will cross the horizontal asymptote? Well, we have to check. So the asymptote here is when y equals 2. And how to test is just to say, okay, I'm going to put 2 here in place of y and solve it and know what x will be at that point. Well, if you get an x, it means it crosses it. If your equation doesn't give you any x, it means it does not cross it. Now, let me show you what that means. So we're going to say 2 is equal to 2 into x minus 1 squared over x plus 1, x minus 3. Well, we can divide both sides by 2, and then this 2 cancels out. So we're going to have 1 equals this, and this will come up here. And then you have x plus 1, x minus 3, 
will be equal to 2, sorry, this 2 is gone, be equal to x minus 1 squared. So if we distribute both sides, we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Um, as you can see, we can cancel these two out. Okay, and you have negative 3 equals 1. There's no x. You can't solve for x in this case. So it means it doesn't happen. Okay, so because this doesn't give us any value of x, it means there's no solution to this. And that means that the curve does not cross the, uh, y, the horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So now we're safe. We're done with these two. Okay, now, what about the x-intercept? The x-intercept is one of these lines. Okay, it is the point where y equals 0. Well, um, sorry, the point where, yeah, this, these points, okay? So if you solve for it, um, the x-intercept will be when y equals zero, which means that the numerator will be zero. Remember, y is zero when the numerator of a rational function equals zero. So let's solve that. So we're gonna say two into x minus one squared is equal to zero. Well, it means x minus one squared equals zero, which means x minus one equals square root of zero, okay? Um, Oh, we can factor it out because I don't want you to miss the point here. There's a major point here you don't want to miss. The answer here is not x equals 1 because here you can have x minus 1, x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so you're going to get x equals 1 twice. So you have x equals 1, but it's going to happen twice. Okay, now when you get an answer like this and you have, it, it's, it's a double answer. You say it has a multiplicity of 2, remember. So x equals 1 multiplicity 2. What does this mean? It means that because this 2 is an even number, when you sketch the curve and the curve goes to 1, it's not going to cut the x-axis at 1, it's actually going to touch it and go back in the same direction. If it's coming from the top, it will touch it just like a tennis ball bounces off the, the, the court. Okay, so it's going to touch it like a parabola or whatever shape it takes, but it's not going to cut through it. So at the point x equals 1, which is this point, this graph is either going to, so let's say the graph is like this, x equals 1. The graph is either going to come this way or it's going to go this way, but it's not going to cut through it. Okay, that's the meaning of a multiplicity of 2 or 4 or 6. As long as it's even, it's going to be more like a touch. Okay, so that's where we go. So now we've gotten this one. What about this one? Y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is at the point where x equals 0. You just have to plug in x equals 0 in this function and then you're going to get that. So we're going to have y will be equal to... So the x-intercept happens when y is 0, so we can say that the point is the point 1, 0, which is this point. Okay, what about the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is going to be the point where x equals 0, but we need to know what y will be. So y will be 2 into 0 minus 1 squared over 0 plus 1 multiplied by 0 minus 3. This is going to be um, 2 times 1 over negative 3. Well, we end up with y being equal to negative 2 thirds, so we can write negative 2 over 3. So the y-intercept is going to happen at the point negative 2 over 3. So let's say this is point negative 1, negative 2 thirds will be somewhere here. So we call it 0, negative 2 over 3. That's the point. So it looks like we've gotten the most important points that we need. Two points, x-intercept, y-intercept. Let's just see how this is going to behave. As you can see, remember we said the x-intercept, the y-intercept is this, and this point has a multiplicity of 2. You can already know what this sketch is going to look like. It's more likely that the curve is going to go like this, touch this point and go back. Okay? Remember, these are vertical asymptotes, so the, the curve cannot cut through them. It just has to go toward them forever. So it's going to be something like this, I believe. But in order to be 100% certain, let's do our sign chart. And I think the sign chart will do well up there. Okay. So what I would do is write out this function. So in order to do your sign chart, you want to write out each section or each component of your um, rational function. So the top part would be 2 into x minus 1 squared. So I have, um, say, 2 into x minus 1, minus 1 squared. And then I have x plus 1. This is just a fast way to do it, x minus 3. If you don't want to write these out, okay, if you don't want to write this out, you can do it mentally and just plug in the numbers into the function, solve it. But this one makes it a lot easier if you do this. So what I'm going to do is draw a line just to tell me when y is positive or negative. So the critical values we have are negative 1, we have 1, and we have 3. Okay, so I'm going to have um, negative 1. I have, oh, 0 also, because um, there's also the 0 point, but it's not very important, so it's okay. Negative 1, I have 1. Okay, and I have 3, and something beyond 3. Okay, so I'm going to be dealing with 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 regions. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now, let's start. Because x minus 1 squared 
will always give me a positive answer no matter what x minus 1 gives me, okay? I know everything is going to be positive. For example, if you take negative 2 from this region, put it here, you're going to get negative 3. When you square it, it becomes positive. And then so everything you do here will be positive. Okay, now let's go here. Now this one we're not sure whether it will be positive depending on the number. Let's pick a number from here. Negative 2 plus 1 will be negative 1, so this is negative. Okay, but when you get here, let's pick a number here that says 0. Well, 0 plus 1 will be positive. So everything beyond this point will be positive, positive, positive. Let's go here. Well, everything here will be negative because 3 is a big number. So negative 2 minus, minus 3 will be negative 5. So this is negative. At this region, too, it will be negative. Here, too, it will be negative. The only point where it's positive will be when you go beyond 3, when x is greater than 3 on this side. So it will be positive here. So what's the conclusion? Well, if you combine positive, negative, negative, you're going to end up with positive because positive... Um, Negative, negative will be positive. Okay, just do the math yourself. Okay, so I'm going to have positives here. Okay, when I get to this region, it's going to be positive times positive times negative. It's going to be negative, negative, negative. Here will be negative, negative, negative. Here will be positive, positive, positive. So I have a graph where the values of y before you get to negative 1 will be above the x-axis. But when you get from negative 1 to 3, it will be below the x-axis. And, oh, remember that we had um, our y-intercept to be somewhere here, negative, that's at the point 0 negative 2 over 3. Okay. I did erase it when I was trying to redraw this graph. Okay. So at this point, we can now see that based on the sign chart, this would be negative, negative, which means it's going to go like this. Because everything has to be negative. And remember, because the multiplicity of x being 1 was 2, that means I said it was going to touch it. So now we can confirm the graph is going to be like this. And what would happen on this side? Well, because the function has to be above and it has to be um, asymptotic to, to these two asymptotes, the graph is going to be like this. How would that one be? The same thing. So we're going to have a graph that goes through this point like this. Uh, something like that, okay? <laughs> this is terrible. But that's the, the shape of the curve you want. You want it to go this way. And when you go beyond 3, it becomes positive again. So it's going to be like this. Okay. Just an idea of what the, the kind of graph you'll be dealing with. This is not vertically upwards. It's still slanted toward this line, but it never reaches it. But that's the idea of the graph. The most important thing is that you know what your x and y intercept are. You want to know um, what the multiplicity of the x intercept is. That's very important. You also want to know what the um, asymptotes are. You want to know, have a good sign chart. And breaking it down like this makes it a lot easier for you to know when it's positive or negative. I hope you learned in this video. If you did, Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.